Today in our 2016 Intimidator Crew Cab Series, we're going to be taking a look at showing you how to install the Come Up Cub 4S Power Sports UTV Wench with synthetic rope, part number CU129412. This one comes in 4,000 pounds with a Hawes Fairlead, and it's also available in 3,000 pounds using part number C129302, and in 2,000 pounds using part number CU122390. Now it can come also with a roller fairlead instead of the Hawes fairlead and for 4,000 pounds use part number CU123922. For 3,000 use CU123529 and in 2,000 use CU122392. So here's what our winch looks like fully installed. Now this is gonna allow us to undo the cable, wrap it around a tree and help pull ourselves out or if we have something heavy that we need to move out of the way, we're gonna be able to pull it with our cable as well. Our winch is gonna have a clutch in it, which we can see it's in the engaged position. And if we turn the knob clockwise, it'll lock in the disengaged position, allowing us to freely pull the cable out. Our winch is also gonna include a hand saver strap, which is gonna keep your hand from getting pinched from grabbing the clevis hook. Whenever you're using a tree to hook your winch to, you want to make sure that you use a tree saver strap, not only to prevent damage to the tree, but you never want to re-hook the winch to itself and damage the cable. Here we're using the Come Up Tree Trunk Protector Strap. You can pick one up on our website using part number CU881091, along with the Come Up Bow Shackle, and that'll be part number CU881092. One thing you want to pay attention to is you make sure you get a strap that has enough weight capacity to work with your winch. Ours here has a 30,000 pound working load, which is going to be plenty for our winch. To begin our installation, we're going to need to find the mounting location for our winch. Fortunately, on our Intimidator here, we already have a mounting plate pre-installed right behind the guard here. So we can go ahead and take our winch and put it into place, but before we do, I'm going to be attaching the wires to my winch, that way making it a little bit easier so I don't have to reach in and try to reach them once it's already mounted. So if we have our winch and we have our red knob on the right side, we're going to have two terminals on the left side. And if we look, they are color coded, we're going to have a yellow mark on one and a blue mark on the other. And those are the cables in our kit that we're gonna to have to put on each terminal. So go ahead and remove the nut from each one. Then we can slide the corresponding cables in place. Now our cables are gonna come with a protector. You're just gonna to wanna to slide that over the end of the cable. And they'll stretch so you don't have to worry about not being big enough. We're just gonna stretch it over the cable slide it back farther than we need to right now just so we can get the cable in place. So once the terminal is exposed, we can grab our winch. And since this is the blue cable, we're gonna put it on the blue terminal. Then we can replace the nut and snug it up. Now to tighten up that nut all the way, you're gonna to wanna to grab a 7 16 wrench just want to make sure it's nice and snug. Once you have it all locked down, you're going to take your rubber cover and slide it over the terminal to make sure it's nice and protected. And then we can do the same thing for the yellow cable on the other side of our winch. To give myself a little bit more room to work, I'm actually going to remove the snorkel and the brace right here from this cross member so I can have a little bit more room and see what I'm doing. I'm just going to be using a 7 16 wrench and socket to take these bolts out. We're just going to set it aside out of the way right back here. You're going to want to drop your cables down. You can just let them hang down right now so they're out of the way. Then we're going to loosely put our winch into position. So we're going to try to line up the holes with the plate as best you can. And you just want to make sure your cable is coming out in the right direction because you don't want to have to try to fight with that after your winch is mounted. The way we're going to attach our winch to the plate 
So we're gonna take our grade eight bolts along with some lock washers, and they're gonna thread from the bottom up into the winch. Now, I just wanna mention it may be a little bit difficult to see, maybe a little bit difficult to reach in there, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get them lined up and you get them nice and tight. It's gonna take a little bit of patience and a little bit of time. And once you get all four of them started, you can come back and fully tighten them up. Once you have your winch mounted and fully secure, you can go ahead and start to mount up the fair lead. Now you're gonna to wanna to take the winch cable, slide it through so you can make sure it's gonna line up and sit right where you want it. Now, if you look closely, our holes aren't gonna line up perfectly, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a paint marker and I'm gonna mark out the area that's gonna to need to be trimmed or drilled out. Try to get it as centered as I can so I don't have to take out too much on one side or the other. I'm gonna come back with a drill and a carbide bit and I'm actually just gonna file that section out just wanna keep checking each time you start filing. Just put that plate back up there and start testing it to make sure you don't take out too much you don't have to. So with that all drilled out, you can quickly just check to see if it'll line up, and they do. But since our holes got wilded out a little bit, I'm gonna be using some washers on the back side so that our bolts don't fall through. So you're gonna to wanna to take your Allen bolt and if you need to, go ahead and grab the extra larger sized washers and coming from the back side, you're gonna feed it through and then the plate is gonna come up on top. We can go ahead and take the included flat washer slide it over the bolt, the lock washer, and then finally the nut. And we'll do that for the other side just so we can get our plate hanging and even, and then we can come back and tighten everything up. I'm gonna come back with a half inch socket and a six millimeter Allen socket to hold the bolt on the back side. And I'm gonna tighten up those bolts holding the plate on. We'll go ahead and do that for the other one as well. So we're gonna to wanna to pull out the front seat cushion on the bottom so that we can get access to underneath so we can get to our battery. Now we're gonna to need to pull out the storage compartment as well and ours has a couple screws, one on each side, holding it in place. So we're gonna to have to find a spot to mount our contactor box. Now I do recommend putting it as close to the battery as you can. And the nice thing is, is all the terminals are color coded again. So all we gotta do is make sure that we have a nice flat surface that's not gonna interfere with anything and mount our box. Now I think I'm gonna mount mine right here. Our battery's right here, so we don't have to worry about going too far. Now they don't provide you with any, but I'm gonna be using a self-tapping screw and just screwing into the metal right here. Just wanna remind you, you always wanna double check what's behind it before you start drilling so you don't damage anything on the other side. So we'll start with our red cable here. Again, we're gonna take the boot and slide it over, exposing the end of the terminal so we can get it in place. You're gonna to wanna to find the red terminal on your contactor box. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the nut, the lock washer and flat washer. I'm gonna slide my red cable over, replace all my washers and the nut. Now, right now I'm not gonna fully tighten this because we're gonna wait until we get all of our cables in place. That way I can see where they need to be positioned. And I'm also not gonna hook it up to the battery just yet. I'm just gonna get everything connected right here and then we can make our final connections later. We can do the same thing for our black wire. Slide the boot over and around. And we're gonna find the black terminal on our box. Now there's already one wire that's connected to it. You're gonna to wanna to leave that one on there and just slide the large black wire over it and then replace all the washers and the nut. 
we're going to want to route the blue and yellow wire from our winch back here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my blue and yellow wire and I'm going to route it down where my snorkel and intake was coming from because it does go to the back. So we're just going to start feeding it that direction and hopefully I can grab it on the other side. I just want to be mindful because the drive shaft is also right next to the snorkel there. So you just want to be mindful when you're routing your cables. You don't want to get next to any heat sources or any moving parts. So you're going to want to pull all the slack out of the cables. And it's never a bad idea to check back up front and make sure they were routed okay. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for our yellow wire now that we have it back here. Slide the boot over. Making sure we can still reach the terminal. And we're going to put it on the yellow post. Finally, we'll do the same thing for the blue wire. I'm going to come back using a 10 millimeter socket. And I'm going to tighten up all my terminals on my contactor box. Now, once I have them tightened up, I'm going to go ahead and slip the boot over and slide it back into place. I'm going to cover up the terminals to hopefully protect it against corrosion buildup and moisture getting all over them. Now that we have this one in place, we're going to do that for the rest of them as well. Our next step is going to be finding a location to mount our switch. Now in the end of our switch, we're going to have a harness that's going to plug into the contactor box. We're also going to have a red wire coming off of our switch and that's going to need to go to a power source that's only supplied when the ignition is on. That way our winch isn't going to drain our battery. Now our kit does come with several brackets that you can use to mount your switch to the side of handlebars, but since we have a steering wheel and not handlebars, we're not going to be able to use it. Now to make our application look a little bit nicer, we're going to pick up one of these momentary switches, this kind of style of switch, but it's going to be a momentary switch just like we have here. And we're actually going to be cutting the wires off of our switch and rewiring a new switch. And you can find any of those kinds of switches that you like. We carry a full line of switches on our website. So just make sure that you do find one that is a momentary switch that has an off and an on or in and out, if you will. Now, if you don't feel comfortable cutting your switch and rewiring a new one, you can just cut a hole right here, run your wires through, and attach your switch to the dash in some sort of fashion, or cut a hole in the dash is big enough for the switch and slide it in and mount it that way. So we replaced the factory switch on our winch with part number BDW20261. Now on the back, you'll notice we have four terminals. Three of those are gonna be from our original switch, which is gonna be our green, black, and red wire. Now the second black wire here on the outside, that's gonna be our ground so you will need to pick up some wire, and if you need some, you can pick some up on our website using part number 16-1-1, and that's going to be 16 gauge wire by the foot. Now as far as the connectors, they're just female spade connectors, and you can pick some up on our website using part number DW01899-1. Now you'll also need a ring terminal to attach your ground with, and you can pick one of those up using part number DW057. 02-1. Now when you want to cut the hole for your switch, you're going to want to cut just under an inch and a half wide by just just over three quarters of an inch tall. Now it's going to be a compression fit, so we just go ahead and take our switch and we should be able to press it in place. Now if there is some gaps, we can always come back and fill in the gaps with some silicone and seal it up nicely. So we can go ahead and start with our black wire coming out from our switch, which is going to be our ground, which I'm going to estimate about how much I'm going to need. I'm actually going to put a self-tapping screw right here into the support so we can cut our wire back, strip the end of it, and then take that ring terminal and crimp it into place. Put it right into the support there.
The red wire, we're gonna have to find, like I mentioned, a power source that only is supplied when the ignition key is on. So I have my light tester here, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start checking some of the wires over here to see which one only has power when, when the ignition is on. So we can see this spade terminal with the orange wires not getting power right now. So let me run in and turn the ignition on. So now the ignition is on, I'll go ahead and check it again. And we can see that it has power. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on there and make sure it turns off as soon as I turn the key off. Looks like that's gonna be our power source. So we can go ahead and cut back that spade terminal and we can connect our red wire. Strip back the end of our wire. I'm gonna be attaching my two wires with a heat shrink buck connector. Now if you need some of these, you can pick some up on our website using part number DW05744-5 and that'll be for a pack of five. Just wanna slip the buck connector into place over our wire. Then we can crimp it in place. We can take our red wire, put it into the other end of our blue butt connector, and then crimp it down. I'm gonna use a heat gun to shrink down my connector. Just wanna mention if you are using an open flame, such as a lighter or a torch, just wanna be extra careful not to burn or char the connector or the wire themselves. With all the connections made up here and our switch in place, we just need to run our connector with our green and black wire back to our contactor box. And I'm gonna take the same route I did with my blue and yellow cables. So we can go ahead and plug in our connector, make sure it locks into place. Now, before we plug up our battery cables, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all my wires, make sure they're not gonna interfere or make any noise and start chafing against anything. So you can take some zip ties, zip, zip tie to some existing wiring, or whatever you need to do, just to make sure that it's out of the way and it won't be ripped out when you're driving through the woods. With all of our cables except our battery cables tidy up, we'll go ahead and loosen up the terminals on our battery. We'll go ahead and remove the nut, put our cables in place, and then replace the nut and tighten it up. And we'll do that for the positive post as well. With all of our wires connected and everything tidied up, we can start putting everything back together. And one last thing we need to do is put our hook on the end of our cable. So we can just grab a pair of pliers so we can bend this counter pin back and pull the pin out. We want to bend that straight. straight enough to pull it out. Then we can take our clevis hook, slide the pin through one end of the bracket, through our cable, and out the other end of our hook. We take that same cotter pin, feed it through, and then we can bend the end over. With the hook in place, we can take our hand saver strap open up the looped end and slide it onto the hook. And that'll finish up our look at the Come Up Cub UTV winch with synthetic rope on our 2016 Intimidator Crew Cab series. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.